why did you decide to give Blade the start tonight, and what did you see from him? Well, I think everybody would probably be – it's tough to be frustrated when you win each game on the weekend, but, you know, you, you kind of want to have your cake and eat it too and have this guy have this kind of weekend. And uh, obviously, Blade was ready to go this weekend. He was down in the pen a couple times, but he didn't pitch. And uh, I thought he kind of maintained his composure, got his work in on Sunday. And after Coach Anderson and I talked about that bullpen that he threw post-game Sunday, um, you know, decided to give him the start and get to that second inning mark kind of kill two birds with one stone, get him some more action, or a bunch of birds, I guess, angry birds. Um, you know, let him warm up the way that he wants to, uh, get a start repetition under his belt, build up the pitch count, and yet still have him available for, you know, possibly Friday, but definitely by Saturday. It's two innings without the win for Blade right now, 36 or so. Uh, for an Italian coach to go home and, and have peace of mind, you know, he, he's – He's in pretty dang good shape, as you can see, so you probably can let him go. I mean, once a guy's built up to 30 pitches, you may lose effectiveness or whatever, but he's, he's ready to go beyond what he did today. But we wanted to use a bunch of guys. There was one guy we didn't get to use today, uh, but that was kind of part of the decision as well. And, you know, I thought he threw the ball really, really well. Thoughts on how Mark did, you know, closing it out for you guys impressively? He did good. I mean, it, we were going to bring him in the game earlier, and we did not. And... Um, you know, so I'm sure he's probably down there salivating just to get in the action. Once you're in there, don't let the coach take the ball from you, you know. Um, now, he came in to replace Kirby, and, you know, Kirby last weekend threw three pitches to a big leaguer and got the guy out through three strikes, you know, Bradley, and, and we took him out. So you only have so much control as a player. Um, but, you know, in practice day, make, make the guy like you and make the guy put you in a game. And then if you're in the game, uh, you know, throw in a manner that, uh, makes it really, really tough for the coach to come come get the ball from you. I think you said a couple weeks ago that Halverson was just a little bit behind Blade. Just kind of where is he at right now? How close is he to getting back? He looked, yeah, he looked really good today um, throwing. But what, what stinks is, and what we wanted to avoid with Blade, his situation was different. Is the old two steps forward, one step back? Because with a throwing arm, I mean, w when you lose a few days, you almost got to kind of restart, and uh, you wouldn't go back to ground zero in, in a lot of cases, but. You do kind of have to restart and then pick up that momentum. So um, I don't know that he would be ready to go this weekend, but he's, he's kind of itching to push the envelope a little bit. Uh, so hopefully not too much more time passes before he's ready. We'll give you guys an update when he uh, faces hitters. That would be the final step before facing hitters wearing a different jersey. What did Tulis go to tonight? And obviously he can use that off speed pretty well. Just what did you see from him? Yeah, we wanted to give him an opportunity to pitch. Um, if, if you throw that hard, it doesn't make sense to start mixing speeds until you have to or you're in a bit of a jam. I mean, there's guys that throw 85 that, that approach it that way. So we wanted to give him the uh, opportunity to pitch, and he did. I mean, some of those breaking balls, the reaction from the crowd, our players, their hitters uh, were, you know, I, don't know, I shouldn't say borderline comical because you got everyone competing their butt off there. But it was, it was a spectacle. Let's, let's put it that way. So the changeup and the breaking ball are there. It's just a matter of him, get, again, getting repetitions. So, uh, but I think we're at a point where, I mean, Ben Joyce could start for us. Um, you know, I don't know that he could go past five innings, but he could, he could profile as a starter for us because he's now shown he can throw three pitches for a strike. He can throw strikes. He can feel this position. He can make adjustments. He's kind of calmed himself down a couple times, whereas before that was a concern for me. Um, so tonight was good to be able to get him out there a couple, and we could have let him go uh, a little bit longer. But again, he's a guy you want available uh, come weekend time. Cortland's up to seven homers this season. Did you see this happening with the success at the plate? That would be one thing for sure, and I think all the coaches agreed with that. Um, you know, it kind of started to come a little bit more frequently last year. Uh, Liam kind of had the spot on lockdown, but you still get some scrimmages mixed in, or you get some live at bats for guys. And he started to hit the batter's eye a couple times, and um, you just kind of saw it. And in the summer as well, Coach Anderson uh, is closely hooked up with where he went in Hayes, Kansas. So we followed that deal pretty close, and you knew that component was going to be there. Um, a couple others, I shouldn't say, have been a pleasant surprise, uh, but all of his at-bats have been competitive. He's also been an on-base percentage guy for us. But we kind of knew he'd be able to drive the ball a little bit this year. And he's even had a couple days where um, – you know, the park doesn't play small or whatever you want to say. Or on the road, too, he hammered one uh, that just went to the wall. So I think he's got a break coming to him on, on maybe a wall scraper at some point. And I know that, you know, 
coaches always think about the next thing, the next get, the next practice, the next series. But to be a part of a team that wins 20 consecutive games at any level in the sport is kind of rare. What's it been like to sort of be a part of that? Um, it's It's been good. I mean, like you said, you're kind of in the middle of it. Um, but you, you typically go home happier at night when you win. And, and it can be a – it can be a tougher environment to work in, practice in, mid-game if things don't go well and guys start to have doubts. So when you're on the opposite end of, of kind of what we've been able to do this year, frustration set in. Some, sometimes that makes you better, uh, but other times it can kind of you know, hurt the environment and just the overall experience a little bit. But um, I think the best part about these guys having success, what you're bringing up, is we've been able to involve so many players, which is what we want to do anyway. But you know, step one is to win the competition. So, um, you know, we've been able to kind of get a little taste from, from both of those jars, if that makes sense. And, you know, I don't want to sound like Bill Belichick, but we, we didn't play very well tonight. They did and, and we did not. Um, but we're at home, fortunately. I think we got some, some skill and you got a couple pitchers we've already talked about that threw the ball really, really well. So it kind of it kind of was make up for some of those mistakes or cover up for some of those mistakes. So we got stuff to work on and talk about tomorrow, which is probably a good thing. Yeah, so I was going to ask more. you about the performance tonight. If you felt like it was just not sharp in some areas or, or, or what it was. It was kind of like the weather. Um, you know, it'd be tough for me. BP was really good. Um, it'd be tough for me to say there was a lull because you, you could, obviously you could, you know, well, you know, they're real happy with themselves, patting each other on the back. Are they ready to go? I wouldn't say they weren't ready to go. There was just a little lull in some areas if you're going to be real nitpicky. And, again, that's coach speak. I hate to admit it, the players know better than I do. What's going on in the locker room, what was said before the game, what's going on in their head when they're in the dugout. But I think there was a few lulls. So, again, conversation for tomorrow, which is a good thing. Here's something we can get better at or learn from. But I told them in the outfield, just to be frank with you, is um, – that's, that's probably the most mistakes we've made in any of our wins. And so that's a nice thing to have in your back pocket because you're going to need it at some point. You're going to need the confidence to know if we didn't do this right or we didn't do this, we can still win the game. And you also kind of need to know how to navigate a 3-2 game, uh, a 10 to nothing game, uh, a down seven game, or a game like tonight. Uh, Missouri's coming to town this weekend, coming off of a, a series win against South Carolina. They played uh, – Played pretty good against Arkansas. What, do you, what have you seen from the Missouri team this year that makes them different from last year? Yeah, well, I, I think, um, you know, last year, uh, as team, you had some turnover there. Um, you know, we just saw the belt kid was at South Carolina, you know, that you were talking about. And so the group they've had this year, everything we've seen has been very competitive. I would, uh, you know, not that I'm, I'm tardy to my homework assignment or anything, but you kind of don't start grinding that stuff out until this Tuesday game is over with. So we'll dive into that a little bit more. Um, but they've got SEC athletes, so you know they're going to be competitive. And like you've mentioned, they've had success this year, so you know they're going to have confidence. And then typically, um, you, you know, if I was to kind of at least make one stereotype about the program, they're usually real well balanced. Got some guys that can sock it a little bit, guys that can bunt, guys that can run. And then you've always got good arms. You know, that place has had good arms forever um, or for quite some time. So we'll dive in deep, you know, the next two days. And it's kind of nice. I told the guys, we haven't had a Wednesday, Thursday practice combo for about three weeks because of our schedule. We're at home Wednesday and, and Thursday. So we'll use that to the best of our advantage. And, and then Friday should be fun because I think it's all ball weekend here on campus. And, the people will be, be excited, so hopefully the boys are too. Was there another uh, setback for Jared Dickey when he was running the first, or did you all kind of know? No, that? no. As a matter of fact, we were yelling at him because he first came out of the box like a, a bolt of lightning, and we were all yelling at him like, hey, that's not the plan. And Liam Spence was able to do that last year and kind of – it's tough when you're in the heat of competition to kind of follow the plan of, you know, I'm here to hit or I'm here to just play defense on balls right at me or run, but not run full speed, whatever. So he was fine. That's kind of how it is. It's, it's tender still, um, but he's definitely making progress. Obviously, we wouldn't use him if we didn't feel like he was capable and turned out to be a pretty special night for him. I mean, I knew about it, but I had forgotten about it, um, that his sister was coming into town uh, first time in two years. And to catch that first pitch for him had to be pretty special. And uh, equally special for me was a little bit more breathing room with that run in the, in the ninth for the eighth inning. Uh, courtesy of that pinch hit. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Appreciate it.